Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel, and this is an update that I've been waiting for for quite some time. Over half a year I've been waiting for this. Ripple announces that they have signed 28 new um, XRP production contracts. So we're talking about on-demand liquidity customers uh, for crypto-powered remittances. The last update we had, um, and I'm pulling from memory here, but I, I believe it was November of 2019, and we got word that there were over two dozen uh, actual production contract customers of Ripple's utilizing XRP as a bridge currency via on-demand liquidity on RippleNet. And uh, we hadn't heard any numbers since then. And I was just talking about this, I don't know, probably it may have been a week ago. I can't remember exactly when I brought this up. And I was like, well, at some point, um, I'm sure they're going to announce that uh, there are more customers here. And I decided they don't announce every single time there's a, a new customer coming on board with on-demand liquidity. But uh, here, here it is. And so they already had uh, 24 prior to that at a minimum, plus this 28. So that puts us at over uh, 50 customers of Ripple's utilizing XRP as a bridge currency. Cool stuff. So I'm going to give you the specifics. Um, in addition to that, uh, the second half of the video, I'm going to uh, engage in more of our little fun uh, critical thinking exercise theory that we've been going through over the last several days. Uh, it seems to be well received, and I think it's fun personally. So I'm going to continue on with this. For those of you that may have missed it, there's an XRP community member that's been uh, having some back and forth with me in a very fun way. Uh, just thinking back and forth about functionally how on-demand liquidity works, how it might affect price. And um, as far as attributes of XRP just as a, a cryptocurrency itself, specifically speed, what are the pros and cons of that? And um, I'm not really seeing any cons. <laughs> but it seems like uh, Martin Valk, who I'm talking about here, the XRP community member in question who's been engaging with me on this topic, uh, he seems to uh, currently agree that uh, speed is not a problem, which is good. So we'll be running through that too. But before going any further, if you would please delicately tap that like button. And if you are a fan of Ripple signing 28 brand spanking new XRP production contracts, go ahead and subscribe to the Moon Lambo channel because you have definitely come to the right spot. This is indeed an XRP-centric channel. Uh, Ripple says it signed 28 new production contracts for its XRP remittance platform in the first quarter of 2020. So to be clear here, um, you know, the last update that I could recall anyway, I believe it was, like I said, November of 2019. Presumably they could have signed more in uh, December. And also we're just talking about Q1 as far as that 28 magical number 28. That's Q1 of this year. That does not include, obviously, as a result of then uh, April, May, and June thus far. So presumably uh, there's December and April and May and this this far into June where they probably landed some additional customers that are for on-demand liquidity that are not included in that number. So I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, you're in the 60 to 70 range or maybe 80, who knows, in terms of uh, in terms of actual <clears throat> production customers on Ripple. Now, that's not speculation. I'm just saying, but if, if I'm just saying if they were continuing at that pace, it's reasonable to suspect that it that could be the case here. Now, the San Francisco payments startups uh, CEO Brad Garlinghouse revealed the numbers during a virtual in-house meeting released on YouTube. According to Garlinghouse, the company beat expectations for new XRP client acquisitions and began to see a slowdown in transaction volume in March as the economic impact of the uh, pandemic, of course, began to take effect. And here's a quote from Ripple CEO Brad Garlinghouse. <clears throat> We saw about an 85% increase in volume across RippleNet between Q4 and Q1, despite ending March with a slowdown in growth. And that is fantastic. Think about that. And, and that's also the, so the 28 new customers, despite the slowdown that would have occurred towards the end, I guess most of the heavy lifting was done prior to that, but that's, that's pretty cool stuff there. And then he, uh, the quote continues, specific to our on-demand liquidity, there's a 190% increase from Q4 to Q1. We saw some of our big customers, a player in Thailand, go live. That's driving a lot of volume. We had forecast 20 new contracts, and we ended up signing 28 new production contracts in the quarter. So despite the dynamics of the pandemic, we were able to finish the quarter on a strong note. And so, 
with uh, if you happen to share my mindset as far as utility actually mattering, because I'll tell you what, I'm not offering financial advice, <clears throat> I don't have a financial background, but um, I'm happy to share my opinion, which is that utility matters and will win the day. So long term, as adoption continues, given that this crypto asset class will never go away, uh, to me, I did stuff like this. It, it's why I don't care what the price is doing in the short term while the rest of the world doesn't see what's going on here. I am happy to continue to hold because I suspect that the price of XRP will be substantially higher in the future than it is today. It's that simple. There are market cycles on top of that. And um, in uh, response to the global economic slowdown, Ripple will reduce the number of new hires it makes for the remainder of the year. But still, at, by the way, lots of employees. Check this out. The company had expected to end 2020 with a total of 575 employees and now plans to end the year with 515. So still quite a few. All right, into this next part now. This is, this is fun. I love this. And from, for, judging from the comments, most of you are seeming to enjoy this as well. It's fun to just think through things analytically here. <laughs> And so um, part of what this stemmed from, and you'd have to go back and watch the other videos. I, I don't want to explain everything. This point. It would, I'd, I'd spend like another several minutes explaining everything that, that's back and forth. But I will say that even if you're unaware of the rest, you can pick up right here and still um, appreciate the conversation, the back and forth here. Uh, you just won't be aware of everything, but uh, th that context isn't necessarily required to understand what he's saying in, in this uh, tweet thread here, as well as what I'm going to say. <laughs> so don't fear not. You know. So here we go. XRP community member Malt Martin Vulcan. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, for taking the time again to uh, share your thoughts because uh, that's a uh, that's a lot of type in here. This is your longest one yet. <laughs> so kudos to you. And um, and so here's what he wrote. Uh, first things first. I do not believe that XRP speed is a shortcoming. Not in the past, the present, nor the future. It is not a problem. Quite the opposite. And I would not change it for anything, as this would negatively affect XRP's competitive advantage. Now, I had to stop there, Martin, and pull up your original thread where you're asking a bunch of uh, XRP community members, including yours truly, Moon Lambo. Uh, uh, this is the original thread, which I'm not going to run through the whole thing, but that's that wasn't your position previously, so I'm, I'm assuming this means that you recently changed your mind. But uh, right here, your tweet from June 5th, you wrote, The strength of XRP is its speed, but this is also the price's weakness. And there's another one down here talking about speed. Here we go here. Uh, here's another one. XRP unlocking all the Nostro and Vostro money is great, but that alone won't affect the price much as XRP is so fast and it's only needed during the actual transaction. So there's were two tweets where you're talking about the negative aspect of XRP speed. So if you've changed your mind, uh, welcome to coming around to my way of thinking. The water's warm, jump right in. All right, <laughs> back to the other thread now. Uh, and then you wrote, uh, competitive advantages. Fast, settles in four seconds. Scalable, handles 1,500 transactions per second. Distributed, decentralized network of 150 plus validators. A stable, a seven-year track record. Eco-friendly, no energy costs associated with mining. And cost savings, 40 to 60%. Yes, indeed, all fine aspects of the XRP ledger and XRP itself. And then he writes, when looking at supply and demand, we cannot look at it in a vacuum, as there are, are, there are uh, other very important factors to take into consideration, like, as mentioned previously, Ripple's competitive advantage. For example, if we were only comparing XRP to Bitcoin, and the transaction speed was the only thing we were looking at, then once XRP speed would drop below that of Bitcoin, people would, and rightfully so, choose Bitcoin over XRP. Uh, hold on, I gotta take a sip of water here. All right, we all good now. Moon Lambo's all hydrated and whatnot. We can we can proceed now. Um, so you're saying if XRP were, were dropping below the speed of Bitcoin, that people would then choose Bitcoin over XRP. Well, I need clarity on what you're, you're talking about. Are you talking about for on-demand liquidity? If you're talking about for on-demand liquidity, then uh, that would definitely not be the case because uh, Bitcoin is not part of RippleNet. It is not part of on-demand liquidity. The only uh, cryptocurrency that can be used for settlement with on-demand liquidity is XRP. So even if it were slower, it's still the only option. Now, if you're talking about for other stuff, uh, well, I... I, I <laughs> I'll tell you what, Bitcoin's got its its market cap, it's, it's got the, the brand cachet, it's been around forever, it's just so slow, you couldn't start a, a brand new cryptocurrency with those technical attributes and expect to get traction doing anything. So, um, yeah, I mean, 
it, that's the one that's at least for the time being allowed to exist and have a, a notable market cap despite all of those shortcomings and actual uh, basically zero use cases unless you want to say store value which i think isn't enough but um if you're talking out, outside of that um Okay, I, I guess so because really, I mean, at that at that point though, I don't I don't know that they just choose Bitcoin over XRP though. It, it depends on what you're talking about. If you're if you're talking about a cryptocurrency for real utility, there are other cryptocurrencies that have technical attributes that are still better than Bitcoin. So I don't know that they necessarily go to Bitcoin. Uh, I just don't know that XRP would be um, perceived as uh, something that can offer you know life changing <laughs> like global utility. So. You know, take that for what it's worth. Then you're right. Uh, in short, for XRP to maintain speed as a competitive advantage over all other options available, it needs to remain faster than those options. Well, it's not like it's going to get slower. So, I mean, that's that's something that I can pretty well agree with you on. Um, then you're right. That being said, this does not mean that a four second, a 10 second, or a one minute XRP would have no effect on the price of XRP. Even though all three options in this case would still be faster than the speed of its closer, uh, closest rival. Uh, now, to bring this back to supply and demand, and for the sake of simplicity, let's ignore the burn rate as well as the XRP founders are selling, uh, changing the total available supply. Then in parentheses he writes, for the record, that does have an effect, and I have included this in the diagram I posted. Uh, I agree it has an effect, just like me selling one XRP technically has an effect on the XRP ecosystem. Good luck measuring it. Because if you're talking about the burn rate, it's it's pretty negligible, um, as is the selling of uh, XRP by founders and by Ripple. So, And I've talked about that ad nauseum, so I'm not going to speak about it further in this particular video. But uh, but yes, it, I, I certainly agree it has an effect. I just hope we're on the same page that it's nothing that you can really actually measure it's that small and then uh, martin writes uh, as i'm sure you all know by now i believe that there is a difference between short-term demand and long-term demand and that short-term demand can effectively turn into long-term demand as long as the number of consecutive transactions is high enough and um, this is the part where I, I kind of ended up having some questions um, when I first read through this, so I could probably use some more clarity. Now, just for everybody listening, when he's talking about long-term demand, uh, for example, he's talking about people like you and me may, that maybe uh, may, may have purchased XRP, and uh, we've just, uh, we're have just we holding it for the long haul. Maybe we put it on a Ledger Nano S or something like that, whatever your hardware wallet is. And short-term demand, he, he seems to be generally speaking about, if I'm not misunderstanding him, he's talking about uh, XRP that's typically... Um, utilize via on-demand liquidity, you know, XRP, as, as he puts it, is in flight, basically. So uh, the, the short-term demand based on utility is the way that I'm understanding him to, to talking about this. And then he continues here. To use the same 4, 10, and 60 second example, it would take 21,600 consecutive transactions a day to turn a four-second transaction from short-term demand into long-term demand, as it would remove it from the available supply for as long as those transactions um, can continue. And I'm not completely sure I understand that the way that it was worded. I could potentially use some clarification here as far as, so what's the cutoff from something being considered short-term demand and then um, meeting this other definition you're using of long-term demand? I'm, I'm not sure how you're making this, the distinction from one to another. What's the cutoff? And if you're if you're defining short-term demand as XRP that's essentially being used for utility, if it's in flight, um, just because it's happening repetitively, uh, why would that then be defined as, as something other than short-term de demand, which is, again, that's the term that you were using it. Uh, why would that s shift into a new definition being long-term demand? And I could, I just saying, I, if that's what you're, you're saying, and that's the best I can understand from what you've written here, then I could use some clarification on your rationale for that here. And then he's got this little chart right here, if you care to take a look right here. Um, and then he writes, uh, it would only take 1,440 uh, consecutive transactions to do the same for a 60-second transaction. As of today, when looking at demand, only long-term demand has an effect on the price of XRP as the number of transactions uh, is still too low. However, once we see widespread adoption of XRP and the number of transactions increase past that critical level, short-term demand will effectively turn into long-term demand, and in doing so, eat away at the total available <clears throat> XRP. Then he writes, this will in turn magnify the effect of demand versus supply, 
and raise the price even more. And I want to point out something here. Uh, it's not that you're terribly wrong, but uh, there's a notable point that needs to be brought up here that most people in the XRP community seem to, to not uh, consider when they're talking about this topic, and I, I really do think it's important. Understand that on-demand liquidity is, of course, utilizing XRP as a bridge currency, but it has a very efficient path-seeking algorithm, and and so it's, it's all automated. So when you're talking about using XRP for on-demand liquidity to convert one fiat currency to another... Uh, it's it's not the buying and selling of XRP in the same way that emotional humans buy and sell XRP. What drives the price largely of, of XRP, what has historically, and this also happens in traditional markets like the stock market, you have emotional buying and selling. And you have FOMO and you have and you, you know people FOMO in and people panic sell. <laughs> and so as that happens, that's where you get this, there, there's a certain net inflow of cash, but... Uh, you know, that comes into the space, certainly. But beyond that, it's just things ramp up quickly. That's how you go from in a matter of weeks, XRP in 2017, going from 20 something cents to uh, a month later, you know, a few weeks, whatever it was, almost $4 from 20 cent something cents to almost $4. You know, that's emotional buying and selling there. And this, again, it happens in the stock market, too, and then things retrace. It's just more pronounced and volatile in the world of crypto because there, there's this frenzy around the asset class. But I want to be clear here. What we're talking about is humans determining that price, and it's largely based on emotion. What I'm telling you here is with it's, it's not going to be exactly the same. To what degree it'll be different, I don't know. But it will not be the same when you're talking about an efficient path-seeking algorithm doing the buying and selling. It's not going to affect XRP price in the same way that you would expect it to if humans are engaged in it. And I think that's a key piece that people tend to miss right there. So it's not that it wouldn't impact it. I just think it's not going to be as much of a direct impact. If anything, it could be um, indirect. It can instill confidence. I could certainly see that. And so people want to come in and use a cryptocurrency and diversify as a store of value. I can certainly see that happening. So that's one particular instance. Uh, I do believe liquidity begets liquidity. Uh, there's, there's certainly evidence of that. And so perhaps if there's more volume and there's more liquidity, um, it could draw more attention to the ledger and then humans can come in and <clears throat> do their emotional buying and selling. I'm just arguing that in terms of on-demand liquidity itself, it's going to be so different that, it, it, like, say there were no humans and it were just the, the efficient path-seeking algorithm and maybe it's the cryptocurrency exchanges that are holding the XRP. And, and this would never work, obviously, but just hypothetical. What do you think the price of XRP would be? It would be probably a lot closer to static than if there's humans involved. Okay, And that's the only point that I'm trying to make. I understand that in the real world, that's not something that could happen. I'm just saying if that weird hypothetical could exist, computers are not going to drive the price up and down. Like That's, that's not it. It's more so, um, and, and, if you, and if you want to call it computers or the algorithm driving the price, it's, it's an indirect effect, not a direct effect. There is no sort of mechanism within on-demand liquidity that's manually choosing the price of XRP. That's simply just not how this works here. So I want to make sure that we're on the same page there because <clears throat> that's not something that's typically um, considered, like I stated here. Um, and where did I leave off? So where are we? I think we're in tweet number 13 here. Um, so you just stated, okay, So you, and I think I read this part. Yeah, so this will in turn magnify the effect of demand versus supply and raise the price even more. So um, I just kind of highlighted how I see price being affected here. Um, it's, it's not a completely comprehensive explanation, but I would be interested in hearing how you believe that this automated path-seeking algorithm, um, you know, efficient path-seeking algorithm, how you see that raising the price, if not the same way that I see it. Uh, some people just think magically without uh, – some people think that it just magically will raise the price, and I don't think they finished the thought process. And nothing against people that hadn't quite gotten to the conclusion yet, but you got to think about how this actually behaves. And I'm not saying that you did or didn't, Martin. I'm just saying that that's what I've seen in conversations I've engaged with on people on Twitter dating back even over two years. Uh, and then uh, Martin wrote, in-flight XRP, the price will, in my opinion, continue to rise. Well, I do agree with that, too. It's just more the rationale for why we think it will do that. I don't know if we agree on that. Maybe we do. Maybe we don't. I'm not sure. I'd have to hear back from you. Um, my belief is that XRP has unlimited potential, but that it will take a while for it to gain traction and that when it does, there will be no stopping it. That's very bullish of you. I certainly hope. I certainly hope that's accurate. <laughs> that's fair enough. 
Um, as banks don't need to hold XRP, the price doesn't have an upper limit. The only thing that matters is the price fluctuation within the four second window. If the price changes from 20 cents to 19 cents or from $50,000 to $49,999.99 during a transaction, the cost is still only one cent. Uh, yeah, true. I'm not sure where you're going with that, but that's certainly factually correct. Uh, and then he writes, I know this was a long post, but I do hope I was able to answer some of the questions, but do keep the questions coming if there are any. As you stated yourself, I'm not a troll, but believe that XRP is the future. Smart investors should question and research everything. Yeah, absolutely. No, I know you're not a troll. I think that you're a thoughtful individual that, that's just enjoying, like I do, thinking through all this stuff and trying to get to the truth of the matter, which is why I'm happy to engage in a back and forth. And I think people have been enjoying uh, hearing uh, perspectives from both of us here. So I, I think it's a, a, a win, win situation really for everybody here. Um, other than that, I mean, I don't, I don't see potentially, depending on what your response is, I don't really see us disagreeing on a ton at this point, because really my primary beef the whole time was more so XRP is not too fast when you made those comments, which I highlighted like six days ago, indicating that you had concerns about, uh, X, you know, the, the, the speed of XRP and the effect on price. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it, you know, unless we have some sort of disagreement on the way in which um, demand for utilization of XRP as a bridge currency is ultimately going to affect the price of XRP. Maybe we have um, different understandings or maybe we have something fun to talk about there. Uh, it just depends on whether or not you, you, you're more in line with my thinking or if you have a, you've come at it from a different angle. And so I am curious to that. But uh, I'll wrap it up here. That's it for this one. Thank you for stopping by, my friends. I am not a financial advisor. Do not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo!